Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson with Nixine Publishing, and we've been doing a series of videos about graphene with Adrian Nixon, our Editor-in-Chief of Nixine Journal. Hi, Adrian. How are you today? I'm great, Debbie. Thanks. How are you? Doing well. Um, we're going to pick up um, a, a little bit more on how graphene may or may not be in, interactive in this entire uh, pandemic situation. Mm -hmm. So since graphene has been used in, in so many sensors and there's a lot of work being done in that, is there the possibility that graphene can do anything to detect the COVID virus? If you asked me that um, at the beginning of the outbreak, I would have said no. But so the pace of change is so fast. Some astonishing work has been uh, coming out of Korea. Um, let me share my screen so I can just talk you through what's been going on. You can make something called a graphene field effect transistor from from graphene and roughly what's going on here is you can imagine this is this is a, a device a micro device that you can put what are called uh, uh the spike antigens the um the the chemical structures which detect the um uh, the virus um particles so the, this this detects and engages with the um the proteins on the surface of the virus now the thing the thing here is that the um in this field effect transistor the graphene layer has these um, uh, spike antibodies put put onto the surface of the graphene, and the the whole thing is set up so that when it's under normal operation, there is no current flow. But as soon as it's exposed to anything which contains the uh, SARS. COVID-2 virus, then what happens is the virus particles lock, lock onto the antibody particles. That changes the electrical conductivity all the way down here. And then that triggers the graphene to become uh, electrically conductive in the field effect transistor. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, well, we know that that graphene is highly conductive, so it's playing into that, that facet of, of what graphene can do, right? Yeah, uh, except in this particular case, the the graphene uh, is very conductive, but not when it's put in this sort of transistor mode. Uh, it's only when you get something that locks onto it will it actually then allow the current to flow. Now, you could either get less current or more current, depending on how this thing's set up. But the point is, you'd be able to detect a change in the electronic current if there's any virus uh, lands onto this sensor. It's And it's remarkably sensitive. It'll only trigger a response when that specific um, virus lands on the surface. It's quite neat, isn't it? Yeah, th this work was done by the uh, the Korea Institute of Chemical Technology in Korea, obviously. But the other thing to tell you about is that um, this thing is really sensitive. Um, it can measure one femtogram per milliliter of virus. And yeah, I'll, I'll say the words, but it's very difficult to understand it. So here, let me, let me just show you what that means. Um, okay. One femtogram of virus spike protein is a decimal place with 14 noughts and then a one of a gram per milliliter. That's sensitive. <laughs> it's insane, yeah. So the, these devices are really, really accurate, very precise uh, and very accurate uh, in determining the, um, whether there's virus there or not. Uh, down to astonishing levels of uh, detection. So that's some of the uh, most immediate work. And as, as the you know the date on here is May um, 2020. So this is only two versions of the journal ago. Yeah, it, it, it's happening so quickly, and we're seeing the research coming out of all different places around the world. So yeah, yeah. And again, uh, the uh, the link to that research is on that slide, uh, so we can make that available on the on the website. Can we, Debbie? Perfect. All right. Great. great. Good. It, thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. That, Astonishing research. We'll just yeah, keep... and things are just moving so fast. We're having trouble keeping up at the moment. 